truth number one. The foundation that all the other truths are based on is the fact that there is a God. We know there's a God because the Bible says there's a God, but we also know there's a God because of the world around us. Think about planet Earth. Planet Earth is hurling through space at astronomical speeds, but yet it always maintains the perfect distance away from the sun. If we were just a tiny bit closer to the sun, we would all burn up. If we were just a tiny bit further away as we're flying through space, we would all freeze to death. And yet, the Earth maintains a perfect distance from the sun. How does that happen by chance? Think about your eyes. The eyeball is a wonder. There is no way that we can reproduce what the eyeball does. Think about how your eyes were formed. When you're in your mother's womb, thousands of different cells knew to start making the different parts of the eye. You have cells over here starting to make the lens, cells over here starting to make the cornea, over here cones, and so on and so forth. Each of these different parts of the eye are being made independent of each other, and each part of the eye is useless by itself but yet they all finish at the same time and at the exact right moment, all those cells come together and they make the eyeball. And the eyeball functions, is able to see and relay messages to the brain. That's amazing. And we can go on and on about the different parts of your body. How could that happen by chance? The world around us shouts that there is a God. Now the question is, who is God and what is he like? Well, as noted before, we know that God is the loving ruler of the world. He's the king. He's in charge. The reason why he's the ruler is because he made everything. Think about it this way. When you were a kid, let's say you made a castle made out of Legos. Now, your brother and sister, they can't do with it whatever they want. They have to do what you want because you are the ruler because you created it. It's your castle. In the same way, God is the ruler and he made the world. Now, God is the perfect ruler. He always does what is right. He's the ruler that everybody wants to have. Revelation 4.11 says, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Now, as God is the perfect ruler and creator of the world, he made mankind. Let me just stop and say that you are so special. You were made to have a personal relationship with the God of the universe. You're made in God's image, and you were made to rule this world under his authority. But is that the way it is now? Truth number two. Unfortunately, we have decided to rebel against God the ruler. We don't want him telling us what to do or how to live. So we rebel against him. And we rebel against him in many different ways. We choose to do what God tells us not to do, and we ignore him. Now, maybe you say, yes, I am a rebel. I admit that. But it seems like most people would not define themselves as a rebel. They would actually say, you know, I'm a, I'm a good person. I have, yes, I mess up, but I try to do the right thing, and I've done good things. But unfortunately, that's not the way God sees it. Romans 3, 10, and 23 says, There is none righteous, no, not one, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Key word there is sinned. Sinning is doing something that God tells us not to do. And every time we sin, we are in active rebellion against God. Now, once again, this sounds too harsh. But think about it this way. Let's say, a person kills someone. What is that called? It's called murder. So if a person murdered someone, what does that make him? It makes him a murderer. So when that murderer comes before a judge in a trial, no matter how much he says, I've done, I've tried to do all these other good things in my life, because he killed someone, he is a murderer, he will always be a murderer, and he has to pay the punishment for murder. Think about it this way. God says, do not lie. Have you ever lied? I have. So if a, someone who murders is called a murderer, what is someone who lies called? 
He's called a liar. How about this? God says, do not steal. You ever stolen even something small? Or how about even stealing time? I have. So what does that make you and I? It makes you and I a thief. God says don't commit adultery. Now God's definition of adultery is much more defined than ours. God says that even if you lust in your heart after someone, you are committing adultery. Have you ever done that? I have. So what does that make us? It makes us an adulterer. So by your admission and my admission, we are a lying, thieving adulterer. And no matter how much good we try to do, we will always be a lying, thieving adulterer that deserves punishment. Now we might say, okay, but I do good, so doesn't my good outweigh the bad? Well, God says that even your righteousness are as filthy rags before him. You know what that means? It means there's no scale. There's no good outweighing the bad. There's just bad. Because even your most righteous and good things that you've ever done are in some way or another tainted with sin. So what is God going to do about this rebellion that you and I have done? Truth number three. Let's say you're a judge and a murderer comes into your court and he has murdered person after person after person. Now, if you let him go scot-free, people would be mad at you, right? They'd be mad at you because you were not just. He committed murder. He deserves to pay the penalty. Well, as God is the ruler, he is also the judge. And God is the perfect judge. He will always be just. So he will not let man rebel against him forever. The punishment of rebelling against God is judgment and death. Hebrews 9.27 says, Man is destined to die once and after that to face judgment. By our rebelling against God, we are constantly saying, God, go away. God, I don't want you. Go away. And we tell him that over and over and over again by our actions. So guess what God, the just judge, does? He goes away. And when God, the author of all good and life, goes away, he takes all life and good with him. So all that is left over is death. And this is not just death of separation from the body. This is an eternal death of separation from God. And this separation takes place in hell. Hell is a real place where real people go. And that is exactly where you and I deserve to go because of our rebellion and sinful lifestyle against God. But there's good news. Truth number four. God loves you so much. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world. Jesus Christ is a historical figure. He did exist on this earth. So the question is, what do we know about Jesus? We know that he always lived under God's rule. He lived the perfect life that we were meant to live. He always did what was right. He always did what God wanted him to do. But do you know what Jesus is described as? The Bible calls him the Lamb of God. Now this is significant but because before Christ, people had to do a ritual to obtain the forgiveness of God. What they would do is if they had sinned or rebelled against God, they would take a spotless lamb, a lamb that had no blemishes, they would take it, put it on an altar, and they would place their hand on the lamb, signifying placing their sin on the lamb, and then they killed the lamb. Now why did the lamb die? The lamb didn't do anything wrong. The point is someone has to to die for sin. Someone has to take the punishment. Now you and I know that we deserve to take the punishment. But Jesus Christ came and lived the perfect life and then he took our death. He took our punishment that we deserve. He is the Lamb of God. Jesus Christ, by dying in our place, took our punishment and brought us forgiveness. 1 Peter 3.18 says, Christ died for sins once for all, 
the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. Truth number five. God accepted Jesus' payment in full for our sins and raised him from the dead. The risen Jesus now gives us new life, both now and eternally. Because of Jesus' death in our place, he has brought us forgiveness so that we no longer have to be rebels to God, but we can actually come as a father and son being reunited. This is so special, the relationship that we were meant to have or able to have because of the forgiveness of Jesus. Jesus also gives us new life eternally, not because of what we've done, but because of his death in our place. 1 Peter 1.3 says, In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Truth number six, you have to make a decision. You've come in contact with the truth, so you have to decide one way or the other. You can decide to continue to live your way. The results of living your way is condemnation, death, and judgment. Or you could live God's new way. God's new way is to repent and turn from your sinful lifestyle and live with Jesus as your king. Put your trust in Jesus' death and resurrection to save you from the punishment of your rebellion. John 3.36 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. So which way represents the way that you want to live? If you choose God's new way, first of all, you need to talk to God. You can pray something like this. Dear God, I have sinned and rebelled against you, and I do not deserve eternal life. I need forgiveness. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die so that I could have forgiveness. Thank you for raising him again from the dead that I might have life. God, help me to change from being a person that rebels against you to a person that lives with Jesus as their king. Amen. The second step is to submit to Jesus. This seems fairly obvious, but because of the prayer you just prayed, you need to start practicing of submitting to Jesus daily. And I highly recommend that you find a good local church that preaches the Bible. As you spend time with God, as you submit to Jesus and keep trusting him for your only hope of salvation, you will grow. Thank you so much for watching this video that I have made. These truths have changed my life and they are of the utmost importance for you to hear and understand. If you have any questions, please give me a call or email me. At the end of this presentation, you will see my phone number and email. Thank you so much.